This agent in Copilot Studio will allow a user to upload files and ask for a review. This particular setup would be incredibly useful if you're looking to review CVs or maybe upload expenses. You can send the file content to a custom prompt and extract either text or structured data depending on your requirements. So in my demo today, I'm going to show you exactly this agent, how I built it, how it works. You can upload files directly into an agent deployed in Teams and get a prompt to analyze the content of that file directly. And this particular agent also uploads those files into SharePoint and saves that metadata that's been generated from the prompt in a column against that file. If I then jump down to the right hand side and ask the agent to review the file, and I will attach a file, in this case, a CV. Before I hit send, here is the CV in question. It's a PDF containing all the information about my qualifications and experience over the years. And when I hit send, the agent will receive the file. We'll see screams of text, which I'll explain in a minute when we look into the inner workings. But then as an output, I get a summary of the contents of that PDF file that I've uploaded to the agent. Now to demonstrate how this all works, you will have seen the screams of text that came up when I triggered that message to the agent. This is actually the content of the file and I'm demonstrating this purely for debug. I have several messages in my topic that capture that data and I found it incredibly useful to see this in order to understand what's happening when I upload a file to my agent. Now to further simplify this, I am going to refresh the test screen. I'm going to ask for another file review, but rather than send a PDF, I'm going to send a basic text document. Send that across, I will get an error message, like so, but I've super simplified the data that comes back as we can see on screen right now. So, to explain this particular topic that I've created, the file review topic, which is a custom topic, it's based on trigger words because I'm using classic orchestration. And if you're using generative orchestration, you can go ahead and give this particular topic a description rather than the trigger phrases. But then as I work my way down through the topic, I have two set variables to demonstrate the content that's captured when you upload a file. So I have a variable which I've called file array. It's of type string. And if we have a look at the expression, it's based on the system activity channel data. Now the system activity channel data does capture details about attachments, but this does vary depending on the channel that you publish your agent to, which is why I've demonstrated this to help you with your own development. So JSON is a PowerFX expression. It will turn valid JSON into a string, which is ideal for Power Automate because we can pass that string to Power Automate, convert it back into JSON, and then parse it so that we can use it in subsequent actions in Power Automate. Hi there folks, sorry to interrupt you. If you're enjoying this, please make sure you like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me and the channel. I'll let you get back to the video. Cheers. I then have a second variable and that's called base64. It's of type any because I'm using an expression here again to access the system activity channel data, but specifically the first object in the original attachments array. Now, if we look across on the right hand side, we can see that our file array, which is the first variable that I've created, it contains the following structure that I'm now highlighting. Now that has an original attachments key, and then after that key, we have an array. And within that array, at this point, I have one object because I only have one file attachment. But the thing I want to highlight is the content URL. Now the content URL contains the base64 data, and it's that base64 data that we can pass to our flow or potentially other actions within our agent to process that file content. We can create copies of that file. For instance, again, if we're talking about invoices or expenses, as that user uploads the file, the file can then get sent to SharePoint. So again, if we just have a quick look at that expression, it's based on the system activity channel data, the original attachments key, and then I'm getting the first object and therefore the first content URL because I'm only uploading one file in this particular scenario. And you can see that that outputs the base64 content. Now, the message that you see on screen is based on several expressions. 
the first thing you can see over on the right hand side is I've told myself as a user how many files have been uploaded and that's based on the PowerFX expression count rows. I'm counting the number of objects within the original attachments array. So I'm able to parse that JSON based on the new topic variable that I've created called topic.fileArray and I'm looking at the original attachments. Equally, I could have a look at the system activity channel data direct, but there are many ways to achieve the same outcome. Then for the file array, you can see I've output the file array variable. For the base64, I've output the base64 variable, and then I've output a file upload. And you can see that this is based on the activity attachments variable. So this is system.activity.attachments. And if we have a look at that over on the right hand side here, at the moment there is some valuable information in there, like the content type and also the file name. But when you publish this to Microsoft Teams as an agent, you'll see how things change. We no longer have access to the base64. We now get access to URLs based on where the files are uploaded. And this is a valuable information that I want to share with you because I think it will help you when building your own agents and publishing to different channels and therefore trying to understand where you get the file content in order to build out your particular agent automation. So each time that I ask the agent to review a file, I'm passing that file array into a Power Automate flow. And that flow here, if I click on it, view flow details, triggers each time I ask for a file review. Now the most recent one that I passed it contained a text file, so it failed. But prior to that, I've been sending PDFs and I, I can explain why the text file failed, but also how you could build something that will allow multiple different file types, things like pictures that people have uploaded, PDFs, Word documents, all of these file types can be processed using a multimodal language model. So if I go into edit the flow, I have a trigger when an agent calls a flow and I have an input parameter called the JSON string. And that's where I pass in that string that contains the channel data. I have a compose purely to see what that string looks like. And then I have a parse JSON, which converts the original text from the stringified JSON into text using the JSON expression and then I've used the sample payload that's generated in the chat to generate a schema. I then have a compose which uses an expression data URI to binary. And because I'm only wanting to deal with one attachment at the moment, I'm taking the output of the parse JSON for the original attachments. I'm getting the first and therefore getting the content URL. And by converting it into binary, I'm then able to pass it directly into the next action. Now this expression in Power Automate is exactly the same expression that we saw earlier in PowerFX in the agent. If I jump back across into the agent just to remind ourselves and pop open that PowerFX expression, here's exactly the same thing. The system activity channel data, I'm getting the first original attachments and returning the content URL. Now, if I was passing this base64 variable directly into my flow, I could then pass it straight into the data to URI binary action, but I wanted to give you as many combinations as possible to help you with your requirements. So jumping back across onto that flow, I've now got the file content of that single file that I've uploaded. And for this particular demo, I'm passing that content into recognized text in an image or PDF document. Now, the reason I'm using this is because I'm currently building this in a UK environment. And at the moment, the UK version of prompts doesn't have the ability to process multimodal. It can't process text, images, and documents. It can only process text. So by converting the PDF into text using OCR, I can then pass the text into a prompt. And you'll see here that I'm passing the full text of the document into my prompt. And if we go into edit, we can see that my prompt simply asks for a summary of the following resume. Now this is very much like ChatGPT. It's using ChatGPT 4.0 as things stand, but it's a repeatable prompt. You go and write your requirements. Remember, put on your prompt engineering hat and you can specify how you'd like the text to be output including structured content if you'd like it to be in JSON. Now, I've already got some pretty cool demos that show you how to summarize some invoices using prompts 
and also how to build a game of rock, paper, scissors using that multimodal capability where I have the webcam capture if I have a rock, a paper or a scissors and we play a game in the Canvas app that I build in about 15 minutes. I'll include those links in the description if that's something that interests you. Jumping back into this particular flow, if I come out of my prompt, all I do then is respond back with the response from the prompt, which is, of course, the summary of the document, which is why we then get the response back on our agent. If I jump back onto my agent, the last stage after running that action is simply a message using that response from the flow. So we get that exact response that's come back from the prompt coming back to the end user. This is ideal if you want to get specific results back using your own custom model and prompt. Now, one of the things I didn't mention at the beginning is that my flow is also doing something else. It's uploading that file directly into SharePoint and we can see that particular resume already uploaded and we have that summary over on the right hand side. That's achieved using some final actions here. I have a loop because it's built potentially to handle multiple files. And when the flow runs, it will loop through all of the files that have been attached. It will create a version of the file and it'll update the file properties with the output of the prompt. Now I thought it was worthwhile me just pointing out that because this is a proof of concept, I added in this for each loop at the end because I thought it would be quite handy to save the file to SharePoint. But of course, if you do upload more than one file, the overall flow is only built to handle one file at a time. So if you do want to handle multiple files at a time, you might need to work on the logic here because unfortunately, this for each loop, whilst it will create each file, it will update the file properties of each file with that single output for the first file. So it's not watertight logic here, but hopefully it demonstrates the capabilities and gives you some inspiration. So if I jump back across onto my agent and ask for a file review and we pick out another resume, in this case for Jordan Taylor, and send that across, we see all that lovely Base64 content again, which of course is there purely for debug. But we now have a summary for Jordan Taylor and if I jump across onto SharePoint, just like that, I have the uploaded file. I have the key summary there. And if I open up that file, we can see the resume for Jordan. Now this is all done via the agent. It's calling a flow that does all this work for us. But how do things change if we deploy our agent to Teams? So over on Teams, I have my agent already deployed. And if I drag and drop, a file across onto the agent and ask it to review the file and hit send. Again, this is where the debug is extremely useful. So if we ignore the errors for starters and scroll to the top, you'll see that first of all, I have two files that are coming through, even though I've only uploaded one file. And the easiest way to understand this is by looking at the file array. So the file array, remember, contains original attachments. We have an array here that I'm highlighting all the way to the end here. And within that file array, we're looking specifically for base64 content because that's what we had when we had the test pane. But this is where things have changed. We no longer have base64 file encoding. We have a link to a file. So if I can call that out, you can see here we have a content URL which includes the URL of the file, which just so happens to be in a folder on my OneDrive. We also have the file name. So this is where we need to change the way that our flow works. Rather than it being based on file content, it's now based on a file path. And there just so happens to be an action that is get file content using path. And that's where we can swap things out a bit. But if I jump across over onto my agent and upload my file where I've made some changes to the original topic and flow, when I send that file across, it should now be able to get the file content using the path and of course provide me with a review of that file that I've uploaded directly into my agent. If I jump across into SharePoint, we can see that that file has been uploaded. We have that summary information as well included as part of that process. And for those that are interested in the changes that I've made, if I load up my flow, I've simply updated the original schema and then I've added in an action here to get file content using the path, using an expression to get the name of the file 
so that I can append that onto the Microsoft Teams chat files location on my OneDrive. Over on my agent, I took the original topic and created a new one. You can see the original one is turned off. And here I simplified things. I've removed all that debug. I've kept the original variable, the file array string, and I send that to my newly updated flow that uses that action to get the file content using the path. And that's how you can upload files directly into your agents in Copilot Studio, looking at how to debug it and also how to explore the different methods within different channels, depending on where you're deploying your agent to. I would love to hear your use cases and how this has worked for you. And as always, please make sure you like and subscribe, and I look forward to seeing you again sometime soon. Cheers.